Hey guys, it's Roy coming at you real quick here with a repair success story. I picked up on the Facebook Marketplace for free. A gentleman was giving away this Bowers and Wilkins ASW750 active subwoofer. It's got a 12 inch driver. This case is 74 pounds. It is heavy. Uh, very thick uh, 7 8 inch MDF here. Um, it, it, it's really built like a tank. Anyway, it just didn't power on. This LED is on now. It is repaired. Uh, he replaced the external fuses. Uh, even though they were good, he replaced them. Um, didn't know what was wrong. Gave it to me for free. So I started doing some research. There are two main uh, discussions about failure of these uh, power supply plates uh, on the AVS forums, on AVS forums. There's also a Facebook uh, page called Repair, Restore, or Scrap It Audio and Video. And that ultimately helped me successfully repair this. But I'm gonna link to the two AVS form um, uh, discussions, one for the 750 and one for the 800, which really goes into troubleshooting on this. But what happened is um, I started to ask questions on the form, didn't get much traction, went to the Facebook page, and a gentleman reached out to me, um, Darmanin, uh, I think he's from Canada. He started saying, hey, let's look at your standby board. Tell me a little bit more about what you see. Do you see any charring? Do you see any problem with the main power supplies, the amplifier board, or the standby board, or the input board? And before we knew it, looking at everything very close with jeweler's loops and magnifying glasses, couldn't see anything wrong with any of the boards he said well i've repaired several of these and they've all been issues with the standby power supply board especially with the capacitors all right finally got this to work really not happy with the cyrillic bp50 but you see here i've got a green led i've let this run for 45 minutes i've let it go into standby which kicks in after five minutes of inactivity and then turn the amplifier back on, signal energizes it and it works as normal. So let me get into what I did to repair this standby power supply to get this unit working again. All right, so here's the back side of the plate. We got the, uh, the interface board here. This is where the RCA comes in, the potentiometers for the volume and the uh, low pass frequency uh, cut off there. Uh, a few other switches for the uh, uh, phase and whatnot. These two here are the two main power supplies. There are two of them in this model. And this is the Class D amplifier that feeds the 12 inch driver into the carcass here, into the cabinet. All right, so sitting on top of these pillars, oh, before I go there, all of these stanchions, all of them were loose, okay? Highly recommend blue Loctite on all of this stuff. Any of the fasteners, anywhere, blue Loctite. But anyway, I took everything apart and I looked at everything first. Uh, I used a jeweler's loop, looked for burn marks, looked for any uh, cold solder joints. I couldn't find anything. So that led me to this bad guy, which sits right here on these four stanchions, right here. And it's the standby power supply, I could be calling it wrong, but I think that's what it is. And what it does is in standby, this thing has, it's, it's warm, so to speak. It's ready to turn on automatically when it senses a signal from the amplifier, okay? So 120 volts AC mains comes into here, and then your, uh, your DC voltage, or, or I'm sorry, 120 is kind of split out uh, across these two terminals here going to coming uh, coming into this plug here which goes into these these two amplifiers okay this is your control um, uh, this control connection here this connection here um, it, it kind of comes underneath here you see the foam and goes into this control board so remember or recall Darmanin was the first guy that reached out to me and in a private message from the Repair, Restore, and Scrap It audio and video Facebook page. 
He said, hey, I've repaired a number of these. Almost all of them have had bad capacitors. Check the capacitors, replace the capacitors. And we went back and forth a little bit. I think I talked to him a little bit about this uh, in-channel MOSFET. And then it kind of went dark. Um, I'm not sure if he uh, stepped away on vacation. I think that was the case. But what I did is I decided to ESR, equivalent series resistance, all of these capacitors in circuit. And I think one of the forum links that I discussed mentioned this guy as being a culprit. But this ESR was fine. Capacitance was fine on this guy too. But what I found on my board are these two caps were really high ESR. Um, but at any rate, I went to DigiKey, bought increased voltage, same capacitance, Nichicon, I think this one here is a Panasonic though, all new capacitors, okay? He also recommended replacing this 12 volt relay. Now we're only talking the relay was a buck 50, the capacitors on average are about a dollar each. And you're looking at about five, six dollars for shipping. He also said that this guy often fails, this eight pin, I think it's an oscillator IC. So I went ahead and ordered that from AliExpress. Now I will link everything in the video description. But what I did was replace this, all the capacitors and this, still no good. Then comes along the next guy from that Facebook page. His name is Ricardo. And he started messaging me in my post on that Facebook page. And man, we had, I don't know, a 40 reply back and forth. He said, hey, do you want to try to troubleshoot this? Do you have a multimeter? Do you have multiple DC power supplies? Do you have this? Do you have that? I even have an oscilloscope. I have a little bit of background in electronics, enough to be dangerous. Uh, electronics in the Navy, but mostly I did reactor operations. So I got some theory anyway, and I kind of understand Ohm's law, so we went at it. And man, there was like 40 replies back and forth, and then we retired one evening. The next day I get, I get up, and that one thread within my original post, that 40 reply, he and I back and forth, it was deleted. Still don't know what caused that. People say it was because of a video I posted. And videos are not allowed if they're for profit or if you're trying to sell a service. But it's for troubleshooting, that's no problem. And by the way, it wasn't even hosted on YouTube. It was a direct video upload. Anyway, I won't get into that too much. He helped me walk through all of this, okay? A lot of it had to do with looking at the voltage here. Um, on this pin out, we even looked at voltage here and determined there wasn't anything bad on this guy right here. There was nothing bad here. He said for me to look at one of these resistors or both of them, the resistor over here, I lifted the lead, measured, all of that was good. Long or short, pin, this is pin one on this IC, and this is pin seven, this is pin 14. Pins, across pin seven and 14, you should see about five and a half volts, or 5.14 volts DC, depending on which polarity you have, negative, positive, this and this. We didn't see that on this chip. This is actually a Schmidt trigger, 14 pin IC. And that was suspect. When he said, okay, you don't see your five volts here, five and a half volts here across there, take it out. So I desoldered this chip, removed it, and then energized the board. And across pin seven and 14, I saw the five and a half volts. Bingo, this chip was bad. Ordered the chip, chip came in. I also ordered these riser uh, pin extenders. I don't know what they're called exactly, but I have the part number. Maybe I'll list it too. I just figured if I was going to solder a new one back in and it blew up because of some other component, then I'd have to desolder all of it. This is easier. So now that it's all fixed, I let it bake in. Again, I replace the relay, all the capacitors, this IC and this IC of the standby board without any other visual problems anywhere, and that fixed the issue. With this being the main failure component, what caused this to fail? I'm thinking because these were really high ESR, these caps were bad, maybe these caps fed into this IC and caused this IC to die, overdrove the IC, I don't know, that's my theory. But guys, again, it's fixed, the standby board, and again, the first guy, Darmanin, he said he's repaired a number of these and it's all been this board here. So, I guess, one way to look at it is shotgun. Oh, by the way, all of these parts, 
total $20 shipped to my door. Just these two parts would be $2. This part was $0.52 cents and $5 shipping for the lowest cost shipping. So $7 to $8 could have repaired this. Instead, I replaced all of it for about $20 shipped to my door. Again, this was the problem. This, this circuit was the problem. That I see. These two capacitors were high ESR. And that's my story. It works now. I want to thank greatly Darmanin and Ricardo. Ricardo especially, he spent several hours, a couple hours with me, helping me troubleshoot this board. Thanks, guys. Oh, hey, guys, one more thing. Um, there was some glue or uh, some type of goop, like you see on that one diode there in the back. Um, so I'm using this ultra black gasket maker. Uh, it's high temperature and it's RTV, room temperature vulcanizing. So what I did is, you see there on the ICs, just so vibration doesn't unseat any of that and those uh, capacitors are secure. I still need to put a little bit on that diode uh, there by that relay. Anyway, that's it guys, thanks.